welcome you watching online today. It's such an honor to have you. I know people watch from Bloomington around our state, coast to coast, and various nations of the world. We're delighted to have you. We're delighted to have you in this room today. And we believe that in Jesus, the best is yet to come. And I know I'm partial to this, but man, that worship band brought in the presence of God today. Great. I'm excited to preach this message today. I've been, I've been working on this, praying about this uh, for about three months now. And I want to encourage your faith today. I want to inspire you to take your next step, <clears throat> no matter what that is. Because I believe God has something for you. And, and I just believe that, that today uh, I'm preaching to myself. And every message, it always applies to me too. And, and I pray that you would receive today, and that you would just, just take this in here in this room and at home. And you would just say, man, I can do it too. Amen. Because with God, all things are possible. So before I get started, I want, to, uh, I want to take time to highlight something coming up next month. So next month, July, we're doing a series we've never done before here at City, and it's called Summer's Playlist. We're going to have some props on the stage. It's going to be a great series. And uh, all month, during the tithes and offerings time, as we give to the Lord our finances, we're going to be doing uh, a secular song every week. Now, don't be religious on me because I'm going to preach on that song and tie it in to, I believe, biblical truth. It's going to be a fun time. So you don't want to miss it, and you want to bring your friend. It's a great series to bring your friends to because it's not church as normal, right? And, and we want to reach you where you're at and reach people watching where they're at and reach your family and friends, whether you know, they are Christ followers or not. So if you don't know Jesus today, man, we love having you here. I'm so excited you're here today, and I pray that you would take your next step. And if you're a seasoned Christ follower, I'm so glad to have you today here that you know, our job is to love people, build family, and lead to death. That's what we want to do. And so we're going to have fun next month. And so I want to encourage you to bring your friends. Now, this week's a great holiday week. We're celebrating the freedom in our country. We know the imperfections of our country, but we know the great blessings of our country. And so we're thankful for our freedom today. And we're thankful for, you know, the fact that, you know, we can be in here and worship God and do all that we're doing. And then so I pray that you have a great week this week with your family and your friends. A lot of watermelon. Come on, somebody. If you're in my house, you're having some watermelon. And, uh, and you have a good time. And then, and then Sunday will start. Now, we're going to do a song from Journey, the best band ever. And Journey led people into worship. People didn't even know it. I'm forever yours faithfully. I come to you with open arms. Come on now. I was like, yes, Jesus. Yeah, I do it. And uh, we're going to do a song off of the album, A Star Is Born, uh, with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. You don't want to miss that week. And, and uh, then we're going to do a song by Ed Sh uh, Sheeran. Is it Ed Sheeran? Am I saying, what is it? Ed, okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching with Pastor Cam next month. It's going to be awesome. The youth pastor. You don't want to miss that weekend. And we're going to do a song by Ed, Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber, JB. Come on, JB. And then the fourth week, you'll have to come and have a surprise. But it's going to be good, and then we'll preach on that song, and we'll tie it into biblical truth. So it's going to be a fun time. So please lay down any religion. Just, just, just take the religious hat off. Come have a good time, and I believe God's going to speak to you, and we're going to see God move. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing today. Your Holy Spirit is here. And I thank you that all of us today would be protected in this room and as we leave. For those watching online, they're protected in their homes and wherever they're watching. I pray that we would lay down distractions, set aside any resistance, and that all of us would receive freely from you today. We would have what you want to give us, and we don't resist it, but we say yes. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Numbers chapter 14. And I believe that God is faithful. What that means is, is that I believe that God, what he says in the Bible, and I in, in a city church, we're a Bible-based church. We believe in what the Bible says. We preach from the Bible every week in ways that are practical. My goal is to be, or, or any speaker that we have, is that it's practical and, and applicable to our lives. But we believe in the Bible. So what God has promised us, 
from the Bible, we believe that God will do. He's faithful to do it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what I believe. Now, how many know that um, if you're a Christ follower or not, how many know that life is hard at times? And so if you don't know Jesus, I just want to tell you that Christianity is not uh, a perfect life card or get everything you want card. I mean, there are times that it's a battle. There's a time that it's a struggle. There's times that we don't have everything that we want. There's ups, there's downs, there's struggle, uh, and there's frustration. And there's times that we don't understand the faithfulness of God in terms of his timing in it. But no matter what, I believe that God always comes through. And so today, I want to preach a message entitled, A Dog and a Promise. And I believe God's going to speak to us. Amen? Amen. Numbers 14, verse 24, the Bible says, But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. So I'm going to preach on a character that is talked about and then at times is not talked about. And that's the character of Caleb. When I think of Caleb, I think of a dog. Now what's interesting is that Caleb was in Egypt with God's people when they were slaves. They were in Egypt for over 400 years. They were building up the cities of, at that time, uh, the world's power. In fact, the pyramids, uh, we know by history, the pyramids were built a thousand years before Abraham was born. So they were a massive power. And the people of God were slaves under their rule. Caleb was there when God called Moses, a man who was in the wilderness at that time. God visited him. He was a stutterer. He needed God's help. So Moses came from the woods to Egypt and said to the Pharaoh, let my people go, let God's people go. And, uh, he, uh, and the Pharaoh said no. Just stay with me, I want to set this up. When he said no, that set up the sequence of events that the Bible lists out, history lists this out as well, that there were 10 plagues, or we could call them 10 miracles, that God did over a span of time to force Pharaoh to let his people go. On the 10th one, the most devastating one, Pharaoh finally relented and let God's people go. Moses led, we believe, over a million people out of the nation. And they began to walk, many of them by foot, some on, on, on donkeys or on horses or on camels most likely. But, you know, they left, they exited. Caleb saw all that as well as all of the Israelites together. They saw all the miracles. They saw everything. They even went to a body of water called the Red Sea. Pharaoh changed his mind once they got to the body of water, and they began to chase them down in chariots and in horses. And they had nowhere to go. And the Bible says overnight Moses stretched his rod out, and God caused an east wind and parted the Red Sea. And the next day those people walked on dry ground across the Red Sea. And then it swallowed the Egyptians up. What's amazing is, just for your study of Bible history, there's an article um, that I read that, and it has pictures that in the Red Sea, they have found crystallized chariot wheels. And even artifacts of spears and shields that are ancient that have been crystallized over time at the bottom of the Red Sea. I believe history bears truth to the Word of God. But... After they crossed the Red Sea, Moses begins a journey, and Caleb's there for all of this. He's there for the beginning. Then he's there during all 40 years of wandering around in the middle of the woods. There's ups, there's downs, there's defeat, there's victory, there's stress. And through all of that, Caleb has a different attitude. This is important because everyone around him, and we know this is true from Scripture, the Bible bears out that only it was only Joshua and Caleb out of the original group that came out of Egypt. Think about only two of them made it into the promised land. Over 40 years after all of them saw the same thing, almost 98% or more actually began to get negative, 
skeptical, they were doubters, they were complainers, and they scoffed at God's promise. Even there's a verse in Numbers 13, 32, when Moses sent 12 spies, 10 of them came back, and the Bible says they spread a bad report to the people of God that God can't do this, we can't go into the promised land. And yet the Bible says that Caleb had a different attitude. Caleb, the whole time, from the beginning of seeing the first miracle in Egypt to the 10th, and then all the miracles after, all the ups and the downs, Caleb had this sense of God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Caleb believed that God was true. Caleb even saw the promised land. Joshua and Caleb were two of the 12 spies. And in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, when Caleb came back from seeing all of the things in the promised land, the Bible says that Caleb said, let's go at once to take the land. We can certainly conquer it. Caleb had the attitude that if God said it, God is going to do it. And you and I are tempted just like these people of the ancient world that maybe you have seen God move or maybe you don't know who God is. Maybe you're praying today and you're hoping that God is real. Or maybe you have served Jesus for a long time. You may be facing dire situations. You may be in a great season of your life and you feel like there's no trouble at all. Wherever you're at today, all of us are tempted over time because of the frustrations, because of the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs. We're tempted just like these people to be negative, to be skeptical, to become a doubter, to be a complainer, and to even say God won't do what he said in the Bible. But we can learn something from Caleb. But why was Caleb different? Because the verse said that I read, Caleb had a different attitude. Why is it? I believe it's revealed in his name. Names in the Old Testament were very important. What you were named had a meaning to your identity, to your purpose, and to who you were. And believe it or not, Caleb's name simply means dog. Not D-A-W-G, you're my dog. Just dog, D-O-G. There was nothing special about his name. By his name in reference, like for example, Joshua's name means Hoshea, which is a, an Old Testament you know, way of saying Jesus. Joshua represented Jesus. He wasn't Jesus, obviously, but he represented Jesus in the Old Testament. Caleb was just dog. There was no representation of heaven of a dog. And by his name, he, he wasn't royalty. He didn't have a lot of prestige, maybe even a lot of promise. People didn't see him as a standout person, believe it or not, based on his name. But I believe God turned his name into something good. Now, when I think of Caleb being a dog, and I think about all the different types of dogs, I think if there was a dog to choose for Caleb, Caleb was a bulldog in his faith. Caleb had a tenacity... And you see it here in our verse, he had a different attitude. Then we see after he spied and he came back, he said, let's go up there right now. We can do this. He had this tenaciousness that he saw God work in Egypt. He believed God was going to do what he said he was going to do. He believed that God was going to help him go to the promised land. He believed that God was going to fulfill everything he said. I can just see kind of this bulldog, tenacious, I'm holding on to God. I'm not going to let it go. I believe God's going to come through. I believe God's going to do it. And he was like stubborn for God. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm holding on. Everyone else began to drop off. Negative, cynical, skeptical. Even this is a, ten, a temptation for us today. We can say, man, you know, maybe you, um, if you do have faith and maybe you started off believing, man, I believe God can do something in my life. I believe God can touch my marriage or God can do something, whatever. And over time, it hasn't happened the way you wanted it to. And it's easy for us to, to change our belief and say, well, you know what? I don't know if I believe God does that anymore. It's very subtle and it's very easy. But I'm under the conviction that the creation has no right ever to tell the creator what he can and can't do. He is the potter, we are the clay. He is God, we are not. He's omniscient, omnipotent, all-knowing. He is God all by himself, omnipresent. That means that we never have the right to say, well, God, you should do this this way. We're tempted to do that. I'm tempted to do that. But just because it doesn't happen when we want it doesn't mean God's not doing it. And Caleb never let go. He was like, his, he was literally a dog by definition. And he held on to this 
promise that God said he was bringing us into a promised land and he did not let it go until he saw it. There's something about, for you and I today, there's something about an attitude that doesn't give up that touches God. There's something about an attitude that refuses to quit. There's something about an attitude that says, I'm going to pray and believe God. I'm not stopping until I see what God said. And I want to encourage you today. Some of us, again, we're facing men, we're facing divorce. Some of us are facing sickness. I know today in the first service someone was here, they're facing a life illness a, 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 or a life-threatening illness. Some of us are facing I mean, tremendous mountains in front of us. And yet, here's the secret of Caleb. He wasn't rich. He wasn't famous. He wasn't necessarily smart. We don't know that. He was simply, by definition, a dog. And all he did was hold on and not let go. Sometimes, when it comes to our Christian faith, the most spiritual we can be is a bulldog. And just say, God, I believe, and I'm not quitting. I'm not stopping. I choose to hold on to God. And sometimes that's the most spiritual thing we can do. You don't have to know all the Bible. You don't have to know all the Bible stories. You don't have to have a perfect life. You don't have to have, uh, I mean, this sense of holiness. All, all you need sometimes is to say, God, I'm not stopping. I'm not leaving. I'm not, I'm not quitting. I will be a bulldog in the attitude of my faith. Now, we know this is true, and so I want to encourage you that whatever you're dealing with today in this room and online, don't give up, don't give in. One great leader said this, you're one prayer away from a miracle. So many of us are tempted to give up. Well, God's not going to do it for me. He did it for, you know, Miss Spiritual over there in the corner. He, he, he doesn't do it for someone like me. He's going to do it for Mr. Smarty Pants on the front row. He's not going to do it for me. And so we quit just at the finish line. We give up on the idea. We give up on the business. We give up on the marriage. We give up on the kid. We give up on the hope that God can do something. But the enemy is behind all that because the enemy knows that it's not about time. It's about tenacity. And so you know, what if you and I would say, I don't care if it takes my whole life. I'm going to, I'm going to reach for God and I'm going to be who God says I can be. And Caleb had that attitude. I'm going to prove this to you. Because he had, a, he had a dog-like faith, but he had a promise that stirred him on. Read the verses behind me as I encourage you with them. Joshua 14, verses 10 through 12, Caleb speaking. Today, I'm 85 years old. I'm as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey so notice this line. So give me the hill country. The Lord promised me. What if you and I would stop, or would stop putting a time limit on God as the basis of our faith or not and say, if it takes till I'm 85, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to be a bulldog and I'm going to latch on to God's word. I choose to believe in Jesus Others may come and go. Some may build their house on the sand, but I'm going to build my life on the rock of my salvation, Jesus, and I just choose to see God move. And I'm going to build my life. Now, check this out. I'm going to build my life on the rock when I feel depressed and when I feel joy. I'm going to stay on the rock whether I'm married or single. I'm going to stay on the rock whether I'm rich or poor. I'm going to stay on the rock whether I understand or I don't understand anything. I'm going to stay on the rock no matter what because God's going to come through for my life. Have that attitude. This is what Caleb did. I mean, he's 85. He's telling his leader, I want that hill. God said I can have it. I'm going to have it. All right, you dog, you can have it. And he got it. I want to encourage you, it's easy to quit. It's easy to give up and turn away and say, this isn't real. I don't believe this. It didn't happen for me. It's easy to be passive aggressive and try to set God up to fail. To, I, mean, I mean, to prove our conscience that I don't have to do this. But I'm telling you right now, that's a trick. It's greater to stand in the gap. As a matter of fact, what are three things we can learn from Caleb that can apply to us today? First, Caleb didn't give up. Don't give up. This is not really deep stuff, but it's profound. Don't give up. You'll be tempted in your life to give up. 
You'll be tempted to quit. You'll be tempted to say it's not for me. You'll be tempted to say God's not doing it. You'll be tempted to say this isn't real. Why am I in Bloomington? My kids are interesting. They, they exemplify this tenacious bulldog spirit. So my boys love basketball. So every week, every week, my wife gets so annoyed. I get asked the same question. I get two questions almost every week. One just from the boys. The other one is from all the kids. The first question I get every week, it's the same thing every week. Dad, who is the best basketball player of all time? And we talk about this, and they're into us. We talk about it. And Kevin Durant. And I say, well, Katie, I mean, he's good, but you didn't see Larry. But, Dad, you, you know, what about Steph? He said, you didn't see Mike. But, Dad, what about Russell? You didn't see Magic. And we talk about it. We have fun. And, and the second question, all four of them, Dad, when can we get a dog? <laughs> and they'll even turn their head and, like, get puppy dog eyes. But you said, remember that one time when you said, I was half asleep, but you, remember you said, we, we're getting older. When can we get a dog? So finally, we're going to get a dog. We're going to do it. And, well, you're clapping, but I'm the one taking care of it. But, 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 but they, I noticed they don't stop. They just don't stop. They don't quit. Now, I'm serious. Jesus said, unless you be like a little child. What if you and I would have that same attitude with Jesus that we don't give up? We just come to him every day and say, God, remember you said that, that, that you promised me that my house can receive Jesus? Remember that you said that I can have perfect peace in my mind? Remember that you said that you would bless me in the field and in the country? So he loves urban folk and countrified folk. He loves it all. Remember when you said that you would bless me and my children would be protected by angels? Remember that? And you would just go to God every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Don't give up. How about this next one? We can learn this from Caleb. Keep praying. Now, we don't see him praying in the verses that talk. And there's not a lot of verses about Caleb. I'm really reading about all of them today to you. But, but you know, really, if you think about the idea of at 85 years old, he says, I'm going to take that hill. That tells me that he, had, he was feeding his belief that God can do it. You and I are going to be tempted to stop praying. And you and I don't feel emotional at times, like you know, good emotions when we pray. We don't feel it's working. We don't sense the Holy Spirit. We're tired. We don't know how to pray. Uh, you know, we're, or we're distracted, whatever it is. But I want to encourage you. You can just say a one-word prayer and shake heaven and touch earth. This is not about being spiritual, being weird. This is not about being like, you know, some church person that tries to prove how good they can pray. No, man, it's about God getting our heart, saying, God, just help me. God, just take me. God, just, God, just come touch my marriage. God, come touch my child. Lord, just come touch me. Maybe you're parenting a child with special needs. You know, God, just come touch my family. Touch my child. Touch my marriage, touch my finance, touch my body. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe you're filled with the, uh, anxiety, depression. Lord, just touch me today. Just keep praying. You know, we can learn this from Caleb. He didn't stop. He had like this bulldog, just I'm coming and I'm not quitting. We can also learn, don't stop believing. Like I said, it's so simple to really say, man, I once believed God would do it, but now I don't. Whole Christian groups once believed in certain things, and now there's no evidence of that belief at all because someone died. Something didn't happen. I understand it. People have died in my life, a lot of them, about 15 of them. I understand. But we get in this mode of what didn't happen, and we change whole belief systems. But there's something to be said about believing, and we don't stop believing. And we just keep on going and we just keep on, I'm just going to keep going because God is who he is and, and man is who he is. But God is greater than man. So I'm going to keep on believing and I'm not going to stop. Now, there's many ways that helps us not give up. 
on the first one here, but I want to encourage you one way is to have community. I'm telling you, because you'll be up and down. So have community. We would love to have you here at City Church. We would love to get to know you, to partner with you. Everyone's someone here. I believe everyone has a niche and a place here. So I'm going to encourage you to go to Build next month and learn about us. We want to learn about you. We want to help you find where you fit in. Again, healthy churches are not asking something from you. They're trying to help God come through you. To keep praying, I want to encourage you to be strengthened and come to Wednesday night prayer at 7 p.m. for the summer. We pray in the auditorium and in the foyer. Come to prayer and just, you know, I don't know how to pray. Just come and just sit. But, but, but take steps to help you do it because sometimes we all need help to not give up. We all need encouragement to keep praying. And then to keep believing, I mean, we all need encouragement with that because sometimes maybe our hope is waning. Maybe we are tempted to not believe anymore. And I want to encourage you with that. There's many things you can do for all three of these. But for City Church, I want to encourage you to consider going to a group in the fall. Because really, when you get around people, they may look totally different than you. But when you get to know them, they're really a lot like you. And you can strengthen each other and keep believing. So we can learn something from this dog. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep believing. We can also see these traits in famous people that have impacted our nation or even the world's history. For example, Abraham Lincoln was an amazing character at his time for a purpose. Listen to some of the things he went through and how he had this bulldog tenacity. In 1816, his family was forced out of their home. He had to go work to support them. 1818, his mother died. Maybe some of you have lost a loved one. In 1831, he failed in business. Maybe some of you are afraid to start a business, or maybe you tried and your business is struggling or didn't work. 1832, he ran for state legislator, and he lost. In 1832, he also lost his job, tried to go to law school, and was rejected. In 1833, he borrowed money from a friend and began another business, but, uh, but by the end of that year, he was bankrupt, and he would spend the next 17 years of his life paying off that debt. In 1834, he ran for the state legislator again, and he won. 1835, he met the love of his life. He was engaged to be married. She died before the wedding, and he was totally heartbroken. In 1836, I never knew this. In 1836, Abraham Lincoln had a total nervous breakdown and was in bed for six straight months. Some of us today in this room and online, you're dealing with anxiety. You, you are overwhelmed with, with fear and anxiety and depression, different things, man. And you know what? God understands it. And even great people like this have gone through something, but they didn't give up. They didn't stop. 1838, he sought to be the speaker of the state legislator and lost. 1840, he sought to become an elector and lost. 1843, he ran for Congress and lost. 1846, he ran for Congress again. This time he won. He did a good job, they said. In 1848, he ran for re-election to Congress, but he lost. 1849, he, he sought the job of a land officer in his home state and lost. In 1854, he ran for Senate of the United States and lost. In 1856, he sought the vice president nomination from his political party at their convention, and he had less than 100 votes. He was defeated. 1858, he ran for uh, the U.S. Senate again, and again he lost. Then in 1860, he ran for the, president of, or the presidency of the United States and was elected. I want you to think about the bulldog faith. And we know that he prayed. Read his diary. Read his stuff. We know he prayed. He instituted this fear under God idea for his time. And he kept going for a purpose that he thought was there for him. What many people don't know is that in 1860, really years, it, it lasted several years. But about that same time, we know from history, they believe they've counted about 8,000, maybe more, abolitionists that were fasting and praying in Pennsylvania and New York State every week that slavery would be abolished in our nation. They really did not like Abraham Lincoln. The abolitionists did not like him. 
They wanted someone else because they thought he wasn't strong enough against slavery outright. But they were fasting and praying every day, or, or every week, excuse me. Did you know that many abolitionists, and they are ignored, but, but I want to just, just stop here and I want to highlight something. Did you know that many abolitionists were martyred? Many of them had their homes burned. Their businesses were destroyed. Uh, if they were caught on the Underground Railroad with you know, the slaves trying to get free, they too were punished as, along with the slaves. They gave their life for this idea of freedom for all people. And it's not a coincidence to me. You may not think so, but I do. It's not a coincidence that there was this dog-like faith, this tenacious man who went through heartache, went through loss, defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat, and he just kept on coming. He just kept on getting up. He just kept on coming. He just kept on reaching. He didn't stop. He kept believing. He kept praying, and, and he kept reaching. And then we have over here people praying in private and seeking God and fasting and praying, believing that this atrocity would stop in our nation. And it's no coincidence that God would raise up a man who had the courage to hold America together and abolish slavery on June 19th. And then there was people praying and prayer and tenacity collided and a miracle happened in our country. And I'm here to tell you, when you pray, God moves. When you pray, God is moving on your family. And when you couple that with a bulldog faith I'm telling you you won't you will see God move in your life the enemy will not prosper your marriage can make it your kids gonna come out your life has purpose God has something for you the enemy wants you to stop because he knows what God can do when you get to that point but you have to keep going you have to keep reaching you have to keep praying you have to keep believing you have to say I will not quit because Jesus didn't quit on me come on give him praise I feel it in my soul God's gonna move for your marriage God's gonna move in your life God has something for you God has something for you. How can we learn from Caleb to don't give up and keep praying and keep believing? In closing, I want to encourage you with something that, this is the Old Testament, but I'm going to translate real quick the New Testament. Matthew 15, verse 27, there was a woman who was desperate for God. Her daughter was totally taken over by evil spirits. She comes to Jesus and she says, Jesus, help my daughter. And Jesus looks at her and Jesus says, I didn't come to you. I didn't come for you, rather. And she made a profound statement. Jesus actually called her a dog. But a dog is a compliment when it comes to faith. You know what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes? It's better to be a living dog than a dead lion. God's not interested in dead Christians. He's not interested in dead religious people that want to argue God and, 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 and want to skimper around and want to just try to and, and put churches down and put people down and, and make fun of women preachers and make fun of this and that. He's interested in just living dogs, just people that will say, I'm not there. I'm not perfect. I'm an addict. I'm divorced. I'm struggling. God help me. That's who God wants. He wants a living dog. More than he wants a statue that has all the right words but no substance. And this woman said, but even the dogs get the crumb under the master's table. I feel like preaching this today. Are you with me today? What crumb do you need? What crumb do you need? Is your marriage teetering today? Hold on. Your child on drugs today, your child not listening to you, your child acting out, hold on. You feel overwhelmed with depression, you feel just beat down by anxiety, you feel like you can't even leave your bed. Hold on. You feel like they've minimized you because you're a woman, they've put you down because you're black, they put you down because you're poor white, they put you down because of this, hold on. You try business, fail, fail, fail. Hold on. You've been praying for so long for God to move and you haven't seen it. Hold on. Because when you go to Jesus' table, 
All you need is one crumb. Folks, listen to me today. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And you don't need a whole piece to get what you need. All you need is a crumb. And a dog gets a crumb. So that's why we have Caleb-like faith. We keep on reaching. We keep on going. I will not quit. I will keep on praying. And I will keep on believing. And if I can get under the table of Jesus, all my marriage needs is one crumb. All my child needs is one crumb. All I need from my mind is one crumb. All my body needs is one crumb. And when I get it, my life will be changed. I'm going to tell you something in closing. The enemy is afraid of you getting what you're praying for. You hear me at home watching me. You don't stop praying. The enemy of your soul is afraid of you getting what God has said you can have. So he puts up roadblocks. Think about the prophetic purpose of Abraham Lincoln. He died five days later. Five days later, shot and killed. Lived his purpose. Failed. Step. Lost his fiance. Step. His purpose was not necessarily, this may shock you, his purpose wasn't to be rich. His purpose necessarily wasn't even to have the love of his life. He wanted her, but it wasn't. His purpose was to get into that office and change our country and begin to change the trend of evil. And the enemy, I believe, if I go back in time and if we could see in the invisible realm, the, 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 the devil was trying so hard to stop Abraham Lincoln and just trying to get him to give up. But thank God for abolitionists, Quaker folks. Loving black people, not being afraid to die so they could be free. Hear what I'm saying. And fasting and praying. And how the two met in 1860. You're going to meet God. It's long past 1860. It's 2019. But I'm telling you. With a dog-like faith and this sense of prayer, it can collide for you in 2019. And God can do what you can't do. So don't give up. Keep on praying and keep on believing. God has a promise for you. Come on, give him a great hand clap of praise. Come on, stand to your feet and let God know you're going you're gonna to praise his name. You're going to give God your heart. You're going to give God your family. You're going to give God your life. All I need is a crumb. But if I get a crumb, I got enough. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Come on. Give him praise in this place. I'm telling you, in the back, he knows where you sit. All the way in the back, he knows your name. He knows your address all in the front. He knows exactly who you are. And he's a faithful God. His loving kindness and tender mercy. Oh man, Pastor Dave, you're screaming. I am. Because I've seen God do it. But you know what? I'm believing for more. So I'm preaching to myself, you keep on going, boy. You don't quit. You keep on believing that God, if he did anything in my life, he can do the next thing in my life. And that's the same for you. So go ahead and bow your heart, bow your head. You online, come to Jesus today. You in this room, come to Jesus. You would say today, Pastor Dave, I've never received Christ in my life. I've never received Jesus. Ever. Or you would say, I have done that, but I am far from God in this moment. I got to come back to God. I got to come back to God. If that's you in this room today and you feel that and you feel the pull of the Holy Spirit on you today, right now, raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you to receive Jesus for the first time or come back to God. God bless you. God bless you. Good. I see it. I see it. I see it. All the way to the back. I see it. Good, I see it. Thank you so much. So many people coming to God. See it, I see it. Thank you. Come on out, band. I'm going to quit. I'm sorry, I'm going. Hopefully you're enjoying this today. I'm preaching myself into a laver. Hallelujah.
You would say today, Pastor Dave, I need support. I need help to believe. There's a promise I'm reaching for, but I'm weary and I want to quit. I'm tempted to stop praying. I'm tempted to stop believing. I need God's help. If that's you today and you want support, go ahead and raise your hand. I want to pray for you all over this room. I see it. Follow me in this prayer so no one is left out. And you are online. You say it out loud in your home. Everyone say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong. I turn from that. I say yes to you. I'm yours. Give me the courage to not quit. Give me the courage to keep praying. And give me the courage to keep believing. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him one more great hand clap of praise. I believe God's moving today. I believe he's moving. Prayer team, join me here in the front. The band's going to come out and they're going to lead us in worship. And I want to encourage you to stay in this moment. And we're going to go out and have ice cream, get photos taken. Please enjoy it. But before we do, if you receive Jesus today, please come down and let us pray for you and support you. If you have a prayer request about anything, please come down and receive prayer. We believe great things happen when we pray together. You can take communion. You can sit in your seat. But during this time, for the next three or so minutes, just worship God. Let this sink into your heart. You don't have to go anywhere. And then as we dismiss, as the band dismisses us, let God fill you with strength. And you're going to believe, you're going to keep going, and God's going to do it. Because you're a dog and you have a promise. You're a dog in faith. And you have a promise from heaven. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he be good to you. May the Lord give you peace. And for this message... May we all have bulldog faith, and may we seize the promise of God. God bless you.